Okay, so for this one, we're going to create a B-size title block, except I am going to change one number. Instead of having this offset, that's set at 0.5, I'm going to set it at 0.25. But all the other dimensions on here should be accurate for what we need to do to create a B-size title block. In this example, we're going to also talk about attributes. So you can see at the bottom here, these words that are called named, project, scale, and date are all attributes. So we're going to create those using attributes using a middle center justification. We have the height here, and we're also going to take a look at the text style. Okay, so here in AutoCAD, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you're using the correct text style or develop a text style for whatever you like to use. The examples that we're going to be using, I will leave the text style alone, but I'm just going to mention and show you how to do it. So if I come over here to the word annotate, Along here, you see these little arrow tabs. These are for the styles of each one of these, and as we go on later on, we will discuss. But for right now, we're going to look at the text style. So it's this little down arrow here, or the key in command for it is just simply ST. Either one of those will get you to the text style dialog box. On the inside of this one, you can see that I can have the font set up the way I want it. I can have the text going upside down, backwards. The one thing that I always like to tell people is make sure that you leave this box of height set to zero. But for right now, we're going to leave all of our standards alone. If I wanted to change the text style, I can select it here, and then I can use whatever appropriate settings that I want to adjust it to. When you create a new one, it's also going to ask you for a name. Another thing that we're going to discuss later on is this little triangle symbol, or this annotative option. But for right now, just showing you where the textile dialog box is, just in case you want to create different text. One thing I will caution you about is that some of these texts have use a lot of memory to create, so that's why most people will stick with the standards. But if you go into something that's maybe that looks like this, and you can see the icon has changed a little bit. Those texts usually use a lot of memory, so I would be careful in using those. Okay, so let's start creating our B-size title block. Remember the dimensions for a B-size title block, and I'll switch back to the Home tab. Let's create a rectangle. The lower left corner, so anytime you create a title block, the lower left corner should be at 0, 0. Enter, and then you're going to put in the dimensions for your upper right corner. In this case, 17, 11. Next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to offset. And this is the number that I told you that I was going to change, which is 0.25. Enter. And then I want you to select that, and then in offset to the inside. I'm going to zoom down here to the bottom. And here, I'm going to offset this line up a distance of 1. But you can see that this is one unit, or one rectangle altogether. So that tells me that I have to use the construction line offset option. Type in 1. Choose this inside rectangle and that bottom line of that inside rectangle and click anywhere ab above it. Let's go ahead and trim these lines off. You can use EX trim if you want to do things just a little bit faster. So I can select the EX trim, select this inside rectangle and click anywhere to the outside. Next I'm going to use the divide command. Remember divide is the one that has the little N underneath it. So let's go to divide, select the line that I want to divide, type in 4, enter. You don't see anything happening because we have to go and adjust our point style. So underneath utilities, you're looking for point style. 
I like to choose this one here in the middle on the bottom row and select OK. Let's create a line and I'm going to type in node as opposed to shifting and right clicking. So I'll just type in NOD, enter. Select this endpoint or node and go right down to where it perpendiculars. You can also turn nodes on as one of your running O snaps and that will make your life a little bit easier and you can see by default that's one that I like to keep on. So I'll create a line and you can see that node will light up. Go down to that perpendicular and do the same here. Let's go ahead and erase those nodes. I'm just going to start here and create a blue window across just those nodes and hit the delete button on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom into the top left corner here and now I want to create some text. You have two options here, single line text to multi line text. In our case we're only going to make a single line text so I'll select that option. Now it's asking me where do I want to pick a start point from or do I want to justify it? In this case, I want to go to justify and I want to choose the top left corner. That's going to be the TL option. Now it's asking me to specify my top left corner. What I want you to do is shift right click and choose the word from. Click on this endpoint. Type in the add symbol. 0 0.0625 comma negative 0 0.0625 enter now it's going to ask me for the height the height that I want you to give to this text is 0.125 enter the rotation angle is going to be 0 so just hit enter and now you should be getting ready to type I'm going to type in and I like to usually put my caps lock on when I'm typing the word name in and I always put a colon behind it. Anytime you use single line text after you're done typing do not hit the escape button simply click somewhere else and then hit escape. Let's go ahead and put in our attribute that's located here. So I'm going to jump over to the insert tab and then I'm going to select the one that says define attribute. Here is where you're going to determine how do you want your act attributes to behave. And in this case I know it want to be name and I'm just going to use a preset for it. Under here is the insertion point of where I want it to locate it and I'll specify that on the screen so that's why that box is checked. The tag is going to be simply a shorthand way of notice knowing what the attribute is so I'll just type in name underneath the prompt is what you want the computer to ask you so I'll take my cap lock off for this one and I'll type in enter name and put a colon behind it underneath your name where it says tag you cannot have any spaces so you have to use a underscore symbol the justification for this one will be middle center. If we had it assigned to another text style we can select it from here. We're going to adjust the text height to 0.1875. Then I'll select OK. Now you should have the word name following your cursor around. Shift right click and choose mid between two points. I want you to click on this endpoint and then click this endpoint. We can do that three more times or it looks like I forgot to trim one line here or we can just simply copy it. So I'm going to select copy. 
select name, the attribute, and then select the word name here at the top. Enter. This is going to be my base point. So click this endpoint, and then click all the other endpoints that are on the top of the lines. Escape. Let me go ahead and get rid of this line here. You may not have that option. It looked like I kind of overshot my perpendicular. So I'm just going to simply trim that off. Let's go to our next box here. I'm going to edit this text just by double clicking on it. I'll turn my caps lock back on and type in project. Click out of it, then double click on the next one. Call this one Scale. I'll pan over, come to this one, double click, and then change this one to Date. For your attributes here at the bottom, I'll double click on this one and it's going to ask me for these three boxes here so I can say enter name. In this case I'm going to change it to project and what I want the computer to tell me is enter project name and put a colon behind it. Okay. Double click this one. This one says scale. My next line is going to be enter scale. Make sure you put that colon behind it, and then escape. For this one that has the word date, let's go ahead and delete this attribute. I'm going to go back to insert, edit attribute, I'm sorry, define attribute. And in this one, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to put date here. My next line will say enter date. Make sure you put that colon behind it. And I want this one to fill out for me automatically. So I'm going to tell it to insert a field by clicking that tab. So once you click this tab, you're going to get this to show up here. Underneath the drop down, I'll choose date and time. And out of here, I'm going to select one of the options that I want to appear. So I'm just going to have the date to come up as normal. So select the one that, that I have here. Go to OK. You can see you're going to get a kind of shaded area here. Go back to your justification, make sure it's at middle center, select OK, shift right click, choose mid between two points, select that end point and this end point. So now you'll be able to fill these out and this one will fill in automatically for you. Next thing I need to do is create some layers. These are going to be the layers that I'm going to create with the colors, the line types, and do I want to make it plottable? And I think this is not with two T's, but I'm going to choose and you can see a couple of them should not be plottable. Okay, let's jump back to the home tab, layer properties. I'll create the first one, which is just simply dim. 
And I'll keep creating these as I go along. So the next one is going to be text. Come up and create a next one. Phantom. Next one is hidden. And you can create these in any order you want. VP. Title. Border. And then the last one I'm going to create, it's going to be a hatch. Okay, so the dimension layer is going to be red. So I'll select the little color there and make it red. Hidden will also be red. The text layer is fine on the white layer. Phantom, let's go ahead and make it on the green color. So it's going to be number three. See, we already took care of hidden. VP is also green. Title, make it magenta. And it's look like I'm missing one. Where's the hatch? Let's make it blue. And border, also make that one blue. Okay. So the ones I need to change, let's look at the phantom layer. So I'll go to continuous. Load. Scroll down till you find the word phantom. And this time I want you to select the one with two. And then select it here. And OK. Let's do the same for the hidden layer. So I'm going to load the one that says hidden two. Select it. And OK. One that says border, let's make that hidden. The last thing I need to do is turn some of them to make them not plottable, which is in this category here. So we know that we want the VP layer not to be plottable. You can see it gives me the red stop. And also the border layer, we don't want that to print. Okay, I have everything created. Go ahead and close your layer. I'm going to select everything and turn it on to the title layer. Then I'm just going to select the outside rectangle and put it on the border layer. Okay, from here I want you to make sure that you save this as B size title block and put your initial behind it. And you have completed the B size title block portion of this one. Also, when you save this one, make sure you know where it's at because when we create the next title block, we're going to reference from this one so we don't have to create all the layers again. So, thank you for watching this one.